Today, I had one goal, to beat as many Sonic the Hedgehog games as I possibly could. The only catch? I only had 24 hours to do it. Going into this challenge, I felt really confident. I mean, the longest Sonic game by far is Sonic Frontiers, and even that's only like 15 to 20 hours max. So I knew I could knock out a good chunk of games in a day. My original goal for this was at least five, but I knew I could do better than that. So I carefully created a list of all the games I think I could beat in this time frame, and I got myself prepared, mentally and physically, for what was about to come my way today. Before we start, I wanna go over the rules for this challenge. Rule number one, a game will count as completed as soon as the credits roll. Rule two, any Sonic game will count, but it has to be official, no fan games. Rule three, the time will start when the first game begins and end 24 hours after that time. And finally, breaks are allowed, but they will eat at your time. Now that the rules are out of the way and my Eggman mug is filled with water, we begin with our first game. <laughs> First up, I went with the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. I started at just about 9am, so that means we officially have until 9am tomorrow to do this. I chose murder first because I knew it'd be a breeze to get through, and I could already scratch a game off this list in like 30 minutes. If you haven't played Murder of Sonic, it was released as Sega's April Fool's joke earlier this year. It's a pretty straightforward point-and-click detective game similar to those of the 90s and the 2000s. Now this game is very simplistic and not very long at all, but honestly it's a pretty great game. The art style is incredible, the writing is really well done, and overall, for what was supposed to be a little April Fool's joke, it ended up being a really thoughtful and polished game but it was really easy. The only thing that could trip you up is the Think minigames when you're doing the interrogation sequences, but I didn't have any trouble with these at all. So after you come to the conclusion that ESPIO DID IT, but that the train is also a bad nick, and of course Eggman's here, oh, and Sonic also isn't really dead, and after 41 minutes of furiously clicking my mouse and not reading a single word of dialogue, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is complete. Our first game down and only 41 minutes in. You know, what can I say? I die hard. With one game already down so quickly, I switched over to my next game. Ah, the OG. Sonic 1 was next because my game plan revolved around the classic games, as they're pretty simple and straightforward, and pretty short, so why not start at the beginning, right? Sonic 1 wasn't too big of an issue for me until I hit the infamous Labyrinth Zone. I don't think I've ever seen a zone so absolutely unfun to play. I had a lot more trouble with Labyrinth than I honestly thought I would, but for some reason I just could not do it. Specifically the boss. Those stupid spears. After some frustration, I never ever want to meet somebody who says they like Labyrinth Zone. And some questioning. Is there just something I'm missing? Am I overthinking it? Is it better to just restart the level and hope I come out with rings at the end? Labyrinth Zone was finally complete and I kept pushing forward. Starlight and Scrap Rain did cause some hiccups during the run, but nowhere near as bad as the damage that Labyrinth did to me. With Eggman defeated in Sonic 1, we now have two games under our belt completed. If this is your world, then it's a world that I don't want any part of! So as I'm recording this, it's currently 11.22am. Uh, Sonic 1 has just been beaten, and I realize that the credits here are unskippable, I think. Um, so as soon as this is over, we will hop into the next game. Sonic 2, of course, was the next logical step to take here, and with this game fresh in my mind, thanks to another video, which you can watch if you haven't already, I knew Sonic 2 wasn't going to take very long to complete. And I was right. It honestly felt like a total breeze. I was zooming through Sonic 2 at the speed of sound. Until, of course, Oil Ocean Zone had other plans. Okay, just don't jump. Just don't fucking jump. Just don't fucking jump. Uh. What the f just happened? What is going on? Hello? 
Dude, I think the game just like pooped itself. Yeah, I genuinely have no idea how that happened. I'm guessing it had to do with getting hit, but also the properties of the fan, because as Sonic gets pulled into oblivion, he's in the fan animation, but I have no idea. Anyway, it didn't take too much time off the run, and I was still chugging through the game pretty quickly. At last, we make our way to the end of the game, the unforgiving Death Egg Robot. Not only are you required to defeat him, but you also have to beat Mecha Sonic before him, all without zero rings. For an absolute pro like myself, it was not a problem at all. Oh f why did I jump too? I'm such a fucking brain dead idiot. Oh shit. I couldn't even see. <laughs> We're just gonna wait. We're gonna play so, so patiently. As patiently as you've ever seen. No! Why did I jump? Why did I jump? So we destroy the death egg, get scooped up by our best bud tails, and we can officially cross off another game on the list. Tails! Long time no see! With Sonic 2 done, we have now completed three games, and the time set at 12.44pm. I decided to take a little break since I was feeling just a little bit of burnout. I had some lunch, and after a short break, we were back on the grind. At 1.21pm, I began the next game. I think part of the burnout feeling was from playing all the classic games, so I decided to mix it up a bit with a game I knew I could beat pretty quickly, Sonic Generations. If you haven't played Sonic Generations, the levels are split into chunks of three with two acts, one for classic, one for modern Sonic. Each era of Sonic is represented here, three classic levels, three 3D era levels, and three modern era levels. There's also a rival fight in each era that will grant you an extra Chaos Emerald, as well as extra challenges that you need to complete at least one of to unlock the boss fights. Generations as a game is very, very straightforward, so I knew I could get through most of it pretty quickly. And I did, albeit with a little hiccups along the way. What? <laughs> oh my god, why did I do that? <laughs> what? No. No, 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 no. For the most part, pretty smooth. It wasn't until I hit Planet Wisp where I started to feel that burnout again, so I took just another short little break. 4.48 p.m. rolls around and the only thing on my mind is the unfinished business I have with Sonic Generations. So I hopped back on and pushed through beating this game. The rest of the game went pretty smooth, but then I had to face the final boss, the Time Eater. The Time Eater is one of the weirdest and unintentionally hardest bosses of any Sonic game I have ever played. The first time I played this, I had no idea what I was supposed to do until I looked it up online. And you can clearly see my frustration and confusion carried over after all these years as it took me roughly 15 minutes to beat. They don't really explain what you're supposed to do, the characters just constantly say the same things over and over again. But eventually, the Time Eater was defeated, and Sonic's world can now rest peacefully. At least until the next major threat comes to screw it all up. You sure you're not just imagining things, buddy? So it's 5.50pm. Four games are now done, and I got thinking. My original goal was five, and I only needed one more game to reach that goal. I was ready to play another one, but I desperately needed not only food, but a nap as well. So I thought, what Sonic game could I knock out really quickly? Hey, any game counts, right? So I booted up Sonic the Fighters, I went straight to Bark the Polar Bear, and absolutely button mashed my way all the way to the victory screen, where all the emeralds have a white background because they forgot to type PNG after their Google search. After beating the ever-loving crap out of Metal Sonic, I faced my final foe. Who else but Dr. Eggman. Yeah, I turned into Super Bark and clapped him and his cheeks pretty badly. And with that, Sonic the Fighters was complete, meaning my total is now up to five Sonic games. You think a shield is gonna stop me? It's 6.05 now, five games complete, and I took another break, but a much needed one for sure. I ate some absolutely scrum diddlyumptious dinner. 
And of course, I set a new goal, nine games. Still, I had plenty of time to get this done, so I wasn't worried at all. I fell asleep and woke up at 10.03. Four hours down the drain and not a single game completed to show for it. Already way behind schedule, I frantically set up my recording for the next game. Ugh. I picked Sonic 4 Episode 1 because it's short, and because it's short I could beat it quickly, but I learned that was not the case at all. This stupid light puzzle in Lost Labyrinth Zone took my little pea brain forever to figure out. It actually took me so long, I died from the time. The time, who does that? Who dies from the time? We get to the end zone and it's just all the Eggman fights again. Yep, real exciting stuff here. But after you do that, you get to fight another version of the Death Egg robot. This one. At least the first phase is probably the easiest version of the Death Egg to fight. Between the fact that you get rings to use as a handicap and the homing attack, Getting the initial 16 hits is a cakewalk. It's after those 16 hits where things start to take a turn. See, the Death Egg malfunctions and becomes surrounded by electricity, and the only way to damage him now is by hitting the arms back at him. But the arms are also surrounded by electricity, so you have to wait till they aren't. But it's a tight window, and even when you get the hits off, you get set flying so far back, you can really only get one or two hits off before you gotta wait and do it again. Can you tell I hate Sonic 4? Anyway, after all that, Sonic 4 is finally done and completed a lot later than I initially thought. Hey, uh, does he look funny to you? So it's currently 12, 13 a.m. Uh, just finished Sonic 4. Honestly, since I took a nap, I'm feeling pretty good, I think. Um, I think we could just start chugging out these games. I gotta at least get two more done. I feel like I could do two or three, probably. My run of Sonic CD started pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of this game to begin with, but everything seemed to be moving pretty smoothly. We flipped from the future to the past a couple times, heck, even Wacky Workbench. Wacky Workbench wasn't even that bad. I was having such a nice and peaceful run, until I ran into Metal Sonic. Yeah, it took me a couple tries to get back into the groove of racing Metal Sonic, but after only a couple of flubs we managed to beat him. That was the most disgusting horrifying, ugliest, most abysmal run of Stardust I think I've ever seen or done. And it's on to the final boss. Metallic Madness wasn't necessarily hard, I'd say. Frustrating if I had to put a word to it. It's far from my favorite zone, but it didn't give me too much trouble in the end. After finally beating Eggman and getting to watch yet another banger animated cutscene, I took a deep breath and scratched another game off this list. This piece of junk. We'd be better off without it, wouldn't we? At this point, it's 1.30 a.m. I definitely could get one more game done. But could I do two? I was torn between two games here, though. Did I want to continue playing the classic games, or did I want to spice things up and go for one of the more modern games? After wasting no more time, I decided the next game. Yeah, so I decided to go with Sonic Forces here. I wanted to escape the brain rot I was feeling from playing the classic games all day, and what better way to avoid brain rot than to play Sonic Forces, of course. Listen, it was almost 2 a.m. I never said I'd make good decisions here. Of all the games on my list, Sonic Forces was the one where I was the most like, huh. Yeah, that took about as long as I thought. A big issue with this game, and one of the major complaints, is the sheer use of automation. I mean, there were some levels where I literally could have dropped the controller, walked away, and came back, and the level would have been completed, I swear. Nothing really gave me trouble on forces, except for the occasional glitch here and there. What? But overall, a solid experience, one that I definitely recommend you try at 2 in the morning when you've already played 7 other Sonic games and you're running on little to no sleep. Sonic Forces is at its best when you're pretty sure you have sleep deprivation and you can't fully grasp what game you're playing exactly. What? It's over! That was fast! We did it. It took 2 hours, pretty much on the dot. Oh boy, it is 3.32 a.m. So, here's the game plan. I'm gonna take a, a nap 
for a couple hours. Get up at like six, seven ish, I think, and then knock out. Uh, we'll knock out Sonic Three. Hopefully, I can beat it uh, before uh, the twenty-four hours. We're now at eight. We're gonna get nine, baby. I slept through the alarm I set. I woke up at 10, 10 a.m. Yeah, so that didn't go as planned. With my oversleeping for such an important occasion, the 24 hours has now passed and we finished with a grand total of eight Sonic games. I gotta say, I don't think eight games is too bad. Sure, I could have done speedrunning tricks, not taken so long of breaks, or just got good. But overall, I think I did a solid job here. This is definitely one of the most draining challenges I've done by far, and I think my lack of sleep may have contributed to some screw-ups here and there, but hey, 8 Sonic games in 24 hours is no easy feat, and if you played the games I played, it's not always a fun one either. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see y'all in the next video.